three, two, you're on. From the San Diego Surf Cup grounds here in Del Mar, California, this is the 2017 USAFL National Championships Women's Division. Pool B, we're underway. The New York Magpies and the Black Jumpers taking on the Sacramento Lady Suns. Brian Barish alongside Gil Griffin as we are underway. The Magpies going from right to left as Drea Casillas puts her body into the football. They come out to the near side. Chasing after it there is, uh, it looks like is win as a, uh, taken down it looked like in Russell and then out to the near side that's got to be out on the full and that is out on the full and Brian one of the big things the Magpies will be doing today is trying to kick goals they have not kicked a goal so far in the tournament kicking 0-2-2 in a loss to Denver and also same score in a loss to Calgary. They, uh, these two teams met last year as Kim Hemingway takes the football, throws that one out into the middle for Casillas, who goes and finds Siobhan McHale up to the near side. They go that one through. It skips by one uh, player there in Algozin, and then they come out to the near side. Oin Win is taken down. Play on, says the umpire. They send that one forward. Does Lawless up into the forward pocket. Going after it there is Skinechny, but Mackenzie Carr is able to knock it away. Picked up by Skinechny. Skinechny for shot on goal. It tails off to the right. Oh, that took a wicked hook off the New Jersey Turnpike. And the ball goes out of bounds. The, the Suns and the Magpies met last year uh, on Sunday in a similar situation. Both teams with no wins. Both teams eliminated. Playing for third place in the group this time around. As Yogi Berra would say, deja vu all over again. As the ball comes back in, Brian. Ball comes back in the play out to the near side. Handballed it off looking for Coplo. Here is Lawless who bootlegs around. Handballs it up over the top. Finds Hemingway. What can Kimmy do? Well, she kicks it off the side of her boot. And Kim Hemingway, well, that went the wrong way for Kim. A player that you are very familiar with, Gil, is the author of Jumping at the Chance. A, a player, for those of you who don't know, who went over and actually got a chance to play for the Sydney Swans and kicked three goals at the at ANZ Stadium. She certainly did. What a way to make her mark as the one of the first two women, along with Katie Klatt, who played for these Sacramento Lady Suns over the last couple of years. And Kimmy does like a goal, and she's up there doing the ruck work today and fired on goal, but the, didn't go the way she wanted it to. It never does. Ball goes back in the play. Uh, the ball comes to ground, swatted away. I think there was a, a, a an infringement there. In fact, it is going to be a free kick. It looked like high contact, and the ball is going to be in the hands of the 23, which is Andrea Hargraves, I believe. Yes, it is Hargraves. So Hargraves, who... Uh, Started playing last year, took over in the ruck, and has done very well. So here it is for the first scoring shot of the game. The kick is on the way, but it was a wounded duck of a ball, but it got there. Andrea Hargreaves kicks the opening goal of the game on the Cooper's scoreboard. It's the New York Magpies, one straight six. Sacramento yet to score. Great job, and it, the kick was ugly, but it got the full points in the end, Gil. And boy, you know, it took a long time, Brian. A long time coming. Two entire matches of not kicking a goal, and very early on in this match, they get their first. As you're right, it was definitely a wounded duck, and something you referred to earlier about she getting she, her getting a free kick for high contact as opposed to contact high, because you know marijuana is legal here in California. Well, I said the last game, Gil, that uh, the last game between Denver and Calgary, the winner went to the Grand final it was like a pack of cows in a cannabis patch the stakes were high as the ball is down in the middle they like that joke in Melbourne too here is McHale who played in Melbourne right at the legs of uh, Wallace and then out to the near side they come it'll pop I believe that's flock but then picking that one up uh, I believe is imitating thank you imitating just kept that one in play and the ball goes out of bounds so New York the last couple of years last year they had 13 brand new players it takes a lot to get into the game, but New York players have done pretty well, and so far they've, they've done a very good job at getting into the game so far. And absolutely, that, and this will be a good match for their experience, even though they cannot win the pool, but they are playing for pride, but this can only help them going forward. Hemingway in there now with a big bump on her opposing ruck, and a tussle for it, and it will be a ball up. Kim Hemingway. I don't think she's been as impactful for the Magpies as she was like to be, but I think also it's just the team kind of getting around her, especially up on the forward line when you look at uh, players like Al Gozin and Skinachny who are starting to make more of an effect on the forward line, uh, uh, especially uh, with the Liberty Tour when both played pretty well. And it's also difficult for Hemingway being a goal kicker when you don't have experienced players trying to deliver her the ball, so that's been a source of some frustration for her. Dev delivery is very important. Just ask UPS as Grace Coplo, who is a 
ball to bring down. Does find Hemingway. Hemingway runs inside 50. Sprays that one across the face. Was a mark taken? No. Skinechny is there. Shuffles away from two defenders. Just got something away. And the ball, I believe, has gone. I believe it's a free kick. It is a free kick. Thank you. Sacramento. Yep, and it's going to be Mackenzie Carr who also played for the uh, also played for the Liberty. Very close to being a score, so Carr plays out to the near side. Coplo is digging in after it. Gracie Coplo from Ellicott City, Maryland, cuts to the inside. Great job to do it. Finds it into the middle, looking in there for McHale, and that I believe is going to oh, look like high contact. Could have gone either way. It looked like it could have been kicking a danger, too. It could have been. You know, they've been calling it that a lot more, I believe, in the women's matches than in the men's matches, and certainly not as much in the AFL, uh, kicking in danger. So kicking the kick in now, or taking that free kick, is Daniel Gallagher. Kicks it short into space. No one can get near it for the Magpies. Now they try and bump the Suns off the ball. Suns emerging with it now, and a kick toward the wing into a one-on-one -on -one contest. Ball spilling near the boundary line, right near Brian and myself. Right in, there's a nice shepherd being put on, and a kick, a little trickle up the boundary line, and it goes out. Kicking that ball right there was Emma Kading as she got a nice shepherd, and the ball will be thrown back in. I'll tell you what, Gil, we're so close, you and I might end up in this game, and I, I don't want to play against these girls. They're way too tough. Here's Rosemary Clo, got it onto the right foot. It just stays in line. Well, hopefully someone will call kicking in danger on them, and we'll get some kind of free kick if we're in danger. Yeah, as Rosemary Clo. From San Diego, playing in her home ground here. She uh, has uh, put on a great first two seasons of play. Now, she played defensively for the Revos, uh, or rather for the Freedom, and she's moved back into her normal position at the Ruck with the Suns, and it was actually good to see at the Western Regional her do very well. I think she had a good tournament in the defensive line. Ball goes to ground, and New York trying to get it out of there quickly. That's Gallagher. She might be gone there. I think she is. Nope. No, uh, umpire says play on. Going after it again uh, is the 15. There's Casillas as well. And then Schaefer able to wrap her up. Andrea Casillas, who is playing, who has played in all 13 US AFL national tournaments in the women's division. And a longtime member of the board, outgoing as the secretary, still the president of the Women's Association. Very impactful on and off the field, not only for New York, but for her country. Here is Wynn. Oin Wynn kicks the ball down low, and a bunch of players going after it, scrambling at the football. The aforementioned Casillas is in there. Uh, getting up there is the uh, 87, who I don't see that is, but that's okay. And we'll have a ball up in the uh, forward line. That would be Stephanie Russo, Thank number you. 87 for New York. And the ball up again, and this time tapped out strongly by Sacramento. Going over for it is number six on the scoring sheet, and a kick toward goal. Clark. Nicolette Clark, go on. Okay, and the ball rolling toward the boundary line. A shot did not even, uh, did not register, went across the face and into traffic now. And uh, a ball up should be called in just a moment. Fun fact for you if you're watching this right now, if you notice the similarity between the Sacramento jumpers and the Gold Coast Suns jumpers, one major difference is you'll notice on the side of the Sacramento jumpers, the Tower Bridge in Sacramento. And there is a kick out of nowhere toward goal. Is it going to be a goal? No, it's it's in play. It's in play. Oh, was, the goal umpire even walked right up to you. You and the I were both full because I was looking at that we're as watching well. The, we're watching the umpire as he, as he walked toward the right in between the posts, but the ball stayed in play. Gold Coast have a free kick. It would Sacramento. appear. Sacramento. Or sorry, excuse me. Here we go again. Gold Coast. It's Sacramento with a uh, is. Well, wait a wait with with a free. Trying to figure out what's going on here as the umpire is moving the ball back. I believe it was a goal. Maybe we just didn't get a signal. I wonder what happened. Can, Maybe it went over the line. over here. Well, in any event, well, that they're makes... bringing the back the ball back toward the middle, so it, it must be a goal to Sacramento. That takes them on to, and that actually evens the score. There we go. It is uh, one straight piece, one straight goal, each of two. And Sacramento have to be feeling good about that because they did not score at all in their second match yesterday against Denver. They were shut out by the Lady Bulldogs 2-6-18 to nothing. And they kicked one goal against Calgary and they scored 1-1-7 in that match. So they've equaled their output so far for the entire tournament. And Sacramento picked up only their second win out of, uh, I think, 14 tries in standalone play at Nationals last year in this game against New York. Uh, again, it was a game for pride as here comes Adamo out of the back. Wow, a donor argue thrown in rather that's Helen Mundy at number 75 ball goes to ground just comes into the middle picked off there and Gallagher 
stripped of the football, going after her to get it. I believe was uh, Al goes in and then stayed with the footy and Skenechny was in there as well. And it'll be a free kick. It'll go the way of the New York Lady Magpies and it will go the way of number 22. That would be Genevieve Lawless. Thank you so much from the from Queensland over here in Long Island. Ball goes to ground. Everyone on the mill. Adamo is in there as well. And the umpire calls for a ball up. One player we haven't seen yet is Tanya Westman. Uh, just picked up the game a couple of months ago for Sacramento. She was a rugby player at UC Davis and has taken up footy. The Suns, the Lady Suns, are very impressed with her. She hasn't made an impact yet on this particular game, but they're very excited about her potential. Absolutely. Here comes a kick that is smothered by the Magpies, but they will recover. Might be coming back the other way. And going over toward the bench now, someone is gone there, and it's going to go to the Suns as New York is pinged for holding the ball. So here come the Suns the other way. I believe that is uh, Nicolette Clark, who is also a rookie, up on that far side. One-on-one -on -one contest, skips by everybody. It's on there, everyone overrunning it, out into the cow paddock, uh, going after the footy. Now they scoop that one up, looking for Elaine Schreiber. Schreiber, a good shepherd thrown in there by Wynn, but Schreiber overran it. Big tackle, that should be pushing the back, and it is on Grace Coplo. It's on Elaine Schreiber. Uh, number uh, number four, Elaine Schreiber. Oin, that's Owen yeah, Wynn. Yeah, Owen Wynn. So it looked like Schreiber, they were both in there. But here's Owen Wynn, who did double duty, played some games for the Liberty and the Freedom in Melbourne. Over the top of Klo. Uh, my goodness, rather, I think that was uh, Casey O'Connor. Out to the near side, able to get it out, heading towards the commentary position. Schaefer saw it drop in front. Ball still in play. Wynn is there. Friendly fire against Klo. In there is Coplo. They're fighting. The, wow, there are two sons fighting in there against the one. Really, there were four sons hand on the ball, and uh, Coppola wanting to hope, hope, help uh, win. I don't think Oin saw the ball. In fact, it'll go up right in front of Gil Griffin, myself, is Klo knocks the ball out again. Uh, Gil, Mark Gonzalez, and yours truly, go ahead. All right, we'll have a boundary throw in literally just a few meters in front of us. Rux battle over the Rux heads, and there's the tap, and it lands right into a Magpie's lap. There's a kick toward the boundary line, but it'll be out of play as no one is near. Hemingway was the intended target, but she could not catch up with it. Also, speaking about uh, women that have played in Australia, Katie Klatt, a member of the Lady Sacram the Sacramento Lady Sons, who played in that match against Kim Hemingway. She played for GWS and Hemingway playing for the Sydney Swans. Hargrave sends the ball forward, again looking for Hemingway, who will get on her horse and get on. She cuts to the inside, Hemingway. Oh, they were calling for it. They were looking for it to be gone. In fact, it wasn't. They play on. Ball goes to ground. Taking her down there was a 10 who I don't have. They stay with the footy. That was Katie's old number. The ball is wrapped up and uh, we'll have a ball up right in front. That was Katie's old number, was number 10. I believe it was, but in, or no, Katie wore number seven. That was, that was her oh. old number. But in going there, I thought Kim Hemingway might have run too far there and thought she might have been pinged by the umpire, but she wasn't. The Sacramento runner, and I was just checking to see if it was Amy Bishop, but Amy Bishop, we'll talk about her in just a second as the ball comes back into play, and here they come the other way. That one is kicked in, going in forward into the popcorn machine, but out of the back comes Klo, and Rosie Klo stabs one on forward. It's a warm burning finger breaking mongrel up country kick but here they come back the other way oh right into the shins of Lorray Quoka. Quoka will stay after the football great effort by both players and getting it for Ruse McHale here comes Klo who will run on it just out skipped to Rosie Klo Big Shepard put in there, hard at the football, and here comes Klo out to the near side, looking for uh, Schaefer, McHale had it, over to get it, and getting away there is Ashlyn Grigg, looks in the middle, that just went 15. They, uh, I don't think they thought just so on that barely. side, but here is Coplo. Coplo will send it forward. Coplo sends it forward, not probably where she wanted it to, it goes to the left, and that breeze really starting to affect things. Now getting into a little Wolf. bit of space is Wolf, she kicks toward goal, and landing in the pocket, but rolling out of bounds. By the way, there are two Wolf women on the Magpies. Stephanie Wolf spells her name with two Fs, and then there is Natalie Wolf with one. And Interesting. I thought they might have been related somehow, but the difference is in the number of Fs in their surname. Hemingway having, having it now. Handballs, but handballs right to his son. And the son kicks it out on the wing, taken there by Schaefer. number 14. Aaron Schaefer. Aaron Schaefer. Schaefer looks for a target. Now she sends it up forward and might be cut off. No off hands of a teammate rolling out of bounds. No, kept alive. Still kept alive, barely by the Suns. Big contest for it. Wen has it, looking to do something with it. The umpire has called a whistle. And I believe that'll be a free kick going 
to, I believe, will that be when? Well, Liz Danielson was in there as well, number 18. She played for the for the Freedom uh, in uh, Melbourne in IC17. And the uh, the thing I like about her is she used her size to get in there. Who's that? That's down? that was be Siobhan McHale, I believe. She's the one with the, who's been paid the free kick. Another another uh, Freedom player. She's coming off. Right. She's coming off the ground now with a runner. Looks to be uh, running off in her own power, so maybe not in too much strife. And taking the free kick over there is number 32, Emma Kading. And Kading will step across the boundary to kick in, which she does. But unfortunately, that kick is heading. Is that is that barely within? And wow, what a mark down there, taken just inside by Coplo, just inside the boundary. It looked like it might go out in the full. It almost looked like an NFL wide receiver keeping two feet in bounds, barely, and being able to do it. She kicks now down in the back pocket. Hemingway running after it. Can't quite get it. Suns have possession, trying to get a handball away. And now they do, and the umpire has blown a whistle. We might get a free kick here, or did it go out of bounds? No, we'll free kick. Free kick going Kim Hemingway's way from a very acute angle. She was taken high, and you know she loves a goal. I wonder if she'll try and go the check side here with that very acute angle that she has going for goal, or will she try and kick toward the center and hit a target? Knowing Kim, she'll probably go for the goal. And no, a short wrong. kick in there, and they, she certainly fooled us, and I believe that Genevieve... No, 27. 27, that would be Sharon Pinches, who has taken that mark. So some unselfish play from Kim Hemingway, and there's the shot at goal. Ooh. Oh! Boy, and that one just didn't go anywhere close. It stayed in bounds. I don't know how. I don't know how either. Painful memories for me. It takes me back to Nat Fife in the 2013 Grand Final for Fremantle on his first couple of attempts at uh, set shots with that stiff Melbourne breeze at the MCG. But a free kick now has been paid, and that is Genevieve Lawless. And Genevieve is at a real tight angle, too, much in the same spot where Hemingway was. Three and a half minutes to go, by the way, unofficial. And Hargrave presented herself as a target, kicked toward the sticks, lands just in front of the behind post. Now swinging around with it is Hemingway, left foot Ooh. boot, but that is going to be a behind. She gave it her best effort to try and kick toward goal, but can only manage a behind. And the Magpies with another minor score. Well, that's, that gives them the lead at the moment. It's 1-1-7 one, one, on the Cooper scoreboard. Sacramento yet to score as they come out of the back line here. Brian Barish alongside Gil Griffin in commentary. Oh, that was the phantom goal that we couldn't quite uh, make out seven there. 7-6 is what I meant to say. 7-6, no worries. Well, it's a long day, and I blame the sun as uh, the ball will come back into play from the back here. Back into play it goes, and looks like the Magpies charging out of it as Casillas, who kicks down towards center half back. Ball rolling around, fight for it. Now coming away, the Magpies handball over the top to a free player, but no, the Suns are going to be regaining control. But a kick in, and oh, a mark almost taken, but spilled by number 25. 75. 75. Gallagher. By Gallagher, and now the ball going back the other way. Going to be a long way for, this, for uh, the Magpies to take it back in. And trying to get a handball away is Taylor Davidson. She just is barely able to do that. The Suns have it. Here they come. There might be a way. Wen gets a handball away, but it takes a crazy bounce. Back toward the Magpies. Into the scrum it goes. Casillas in there trying to get the ball away. Squirts out. Magpies still trying to get it away. Suns have it. Now the whistle is blown. Ball will be in the center of the ground. I believe that will be a free kick paid to Aaron Schaefer. Nickname Oranga because of that red hair. Less than two minutes to go. We're getting pretty near the end, as John and Paul once said. Going up for the mark there was Clo. Couldn't take it cleanly. Mondia was pushed in the back by Casillas. No call. Clo with a head take down that not called either. Just got it away. Looking for Kading. Still with the footy. They play that on. Kading has it. She'll go forward. Kicking that one into the corner in the Wallace direction. Wallace has plenty of room and plenty of time. She picks up the footy. She was hassled and just got a kick towards goal, pushing and shoving away, looking after it again, trying to go, and she was taken down, taken down off the ball. Yes, it is. Umpires being very liberal, Brian, as you pointed out, a couple of pushes in the back. It also looked like there was some incorrect disposal going on the way when the Magpies were charging down the ground that they could have been pinged for. Claire Algozin from, jet, from just in front. And will the kick from Algozin go in? She walks the line. 
picks up some speed, right footed kick. Oh, I think the breeze took it just to the right as she put a little bit of a swing around it. So on the Cooper scoreboard, that takes uh, New York to one, two, eight. Sacramento one straight six, latter stages second half. And the one thing about this, Gil, I think New York's had the sway of play. The wind's been a little bit in their favor, but Sacramento is still fighting hard. They've gotten their chances forward as evidenced by the fact they have a goal on the scoreboard. Absolutely, and again, that was the first score. Uh, they did not score in the second match they played yesterday. The ball kicked in by Sacramento and a big struggle for it off the ball. I believe that Sacramento, I think Hemingway was taken down off the ball. There's a little argy-bargy between Hemingway now and her opponent as Hemingway quote. was definitely shoved when she did not have the ball. Should be a free kick and will be a free kick her way. And and I believe the I believe the time has expired, Gil. So so here is Hemingway who will kick after the siren to try and extend the team's lead. And the interesting thing about that is that was Rosie Quo, who's now on the mark, their freedom teammates. And here comes the kick from Hemingway. Little run up just inside 50. She lets it go. Oh, kick going boy. way across to the left, not even close to any target. The ball will fall harmlessly into ground as we have reached the end of the first half. And on the Cooper scoreboard, Brian, what do we have? One, two, eight for the New York Magpies. One straight six for the Sacramento Lady Suns. A very good form. You know what? There's a lot of spirit in this game. Both teams eliminated from finals contention, but both teams don't want to leave here without that win. Absolutely, and as you said, there's a lot of spirit, a lot of spite, it would appear to be. If there have been some pushes in the back, some hard hits off the ball. Hemingway certainly had a case to, to remonstrate there. And uh, now, just watching her, she seems pretty peeved as she throws a water bottle and kicks one in frustration. It's been a tough tournament for her. A lot of pride involved for someone like Kim Hemingway, who's gone about as far as any American woman has uh, on the footy stage. She's also also in a situation where she's being looked to as a leader for this very young side. She's a fiery character. Halftime here at the Surf Cup grounds in San Diego. We are get, again the score, the New York Lady, uh, the New York Magpies eight, the Sacramento Lady Sun six. We'll step aside and come right back with the second half of this one. You're watching it here on USAFL.com. about to learn how to teach our kids slash teach ourselves how to kick a footy. <laughs> okay, tips to kick the footy. Number one, nose over toes, which means just gonna be over the football. You don't wanna be looking up to where you're kicking, you wanna be over the footy. Laces to where we're kicking it, we're gonna drop it, and we're gonna point our toe. Nose to toes, and then we're dropping, but and not, not throwing up. Good, perfect. We can go home. <laughs> mm, I love that summer feeling. Happiness is calling at sandiego.org. My first game, I stood there and I was just like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm just gonna run. I just kept going and I kept going to practice, I kept going to the games, and eventually it just clicked. And I was just like, oh, I get it now, like this is fun. Aussie Rules is often known as footy is the equivalent of like the NFL here. And so in Australia, they call it AFL. So in Australia, it's still 
huge sport, especially for the women. It's getting even bigger. It's empowering for women, young women. It's really great to just be able to run around and just have so much fun with a bunch of people that love the same sport that you do. It just gives me this energy that I just can't describe and it just brings me like so much joy. <laughs>
and the Suns will have another opportunity as the ball goes up now. Ball swatted in the air. Suns go to ground trying to control it. Handball out of the back. Now it spills to ground, and a player for the Suns grabs a swing and a miss on the kick. Rolls forward a little bit. Another handball out of the pack and a kick forward. That one rolling toward the boundary line to in the back pocket. Suns will catch up to it, and an attempt at grabbing it doesn't come off. A kick forward, and now the Magpies try and clear it, and they do, coming up the wing, rolling along toward the boundary line, almost gets in the way of runner of a runner. Hemingway coming the closest she can to get it. Now Hemingway with some spice going with, with Erica Palmer there as Palmer was trying to get to the footy. Ball comes back into play. Here is Clo who knocks it down for Schaefer. She's taken down. Ball cried the crowd, and uh, Schaefer is down. But she's getting up, and then Wynn, that's out on the full. And Wynn kicks it out on the full, and you can really see the wind really playing havoc with everything right now. She, uh, Schaefer just now getting up. Talk about Amy Bishop. She and Matt Bishop are legends in this in the USAFL. They helped found Sacramento after uh, after they moved from Baltimore, Washington. Amy Bishop, like Drea Casillas, played in that first national tournament in 2005. To Carl going against Algozin right in front of us. Schaefer handballs it back for Carr. Handballs it across looking for DeCarl, but it's going to be picked up by Gallagher. That's going out on the full. Gallagher kicks it out on the full right there. Big tussle going on between these sides. Interestingly enough, Brian, it looked like in the last couple of ruck contests, the Magpies haven't had anyone nominating in that position. Hemingway is doing the rucking today, and it's a free kick now going for the Suns. That ball came out on the full, and here it comes. The kick comes in. It looks like it might be cut off by the Magpies. On the half, Folly not quite taken. Wynn has it now. Wynn wheeling around, kicks it out to her left. Ball spills off the deck. Now Coplo going for it, and high I tackle. believe, and high tackle as Coplo got her high, and uh, that Suns player will now have a free kick. It uh, looks like it's uh, Bishop. We'll go out to the left side. That will go up high. Ball goes to ground. That one went like a football center. Going back to get it is Davidson. She's shepherded off the football. Uh, again, there is Klo. She was pushed in the back. Somebody was. And now here is Danielson, who mushes the ball forward. Mush, mush, mush. Ball goes in. Chasing after it, there is uh, Nicolette Clark. Clark will get to it. Will the boundary line. Oh, that's like a cross in soccer into the middle. Well, will Smith get or will Kirk get to it? No, she can't. And there is Brea Casillas to get it out of danger. Out to the near side, it'll bounce in front of DeCarl. Wolf throws a bump. Out to the near side, looking for Algozin, who dropped the footy. And then she was taken down. Just got away. That's Claire Algozin going up for, skin, for Hemingway. Hemingway. Hemingway gets it. Looks like she wanted to play on, but she doesn't. Instead, she swats away. That's Mackenzie Carr that was there. Go on, Gail. Okay, and Hemingway kicks it forward into center half forward. Ball spilling. Magpies with numbers out the back now. And overrunning the ball is Genevieve Lawless. She taps it, though, out toward the boundary line where Hemingway now has it. That ball goes off of her boot. Did it go out on the full or did it skitter off the ground? We'll get a ruling for the umpire in a moment. 8-7 to seven the score on Cooper's scoreboard. Brian Barish with Gil Griffin and commentary. Mark Gonzalez bringing you these beautiful pictures from the San Diego sport, uh, Sports Ground, San Diego Surf Cup Sports Ground here in San Diego. Ball comes back into play. It was caught. she got to get rid of it quickly, and she does. Ball rolls around. Wolf, but there is, uh, oh, taken down quickly there was, and, uh, was Westman. And no call by the umpire. It appeared to be high. And now fighting her way through is a Suns player who handballs it. Struggle for it now, and the umpire is now going to call something. Let's see what the ruling is. It looks like it'll be a, a free kick, and a free kick will go uh, to Gallagher. Okay. So, so here is Danielle Gallagher, who has it 40 meters from goal. She'll go back, and then she'll kick that one forward. Looking in, getting knocked down was to Carl. Going out to get it, and here comes Rosemary Clo. Throws that one onto the right. Goes in, drill drop in front of Schreiber. Takes a bad bounce, but Schreiber stays with the football. Long hand back to win. Got by one. Coplo took her down. Great passage of play to Clark. Clark's got to bounce the footy. because She got it away up the right side. Going after Verkirk. Looking for Verkirk, and it's off the legs of Ari Lockett. Ball goes out of ground. Great action on both sides of the ball. One point the difference, New York the lead. What a great sleight of hand by Wynn, who handballed just at the right time, almost as if she had eyes in the back of her head to get rid of it. Might have been running too far, though, against the Suns, but not called. 
Nope, just, just got a bounce to it, and then just getting away. That, I believe, was Schaefer who spun around. Quo, a little uh, do -si do sidestep marked in front by Verkirk. And not touched, so Verkirk takes that clean mark, and she'll be lining up for goal. Instead, she handballs away, but into space, no one home. Sun player has it, ball spills to ground, struggle for it, and coming away with it now, the Suns, they might have a shot at it. Still being tied up in traffic, looked like a little friendly fire, a little bit of the same. Lockett now tries to get rid of it, lets it go. Ball comes to ground again. Suns with a hand pass out toward goal. Hand pass wide Ooh. down toward the boundary line. His kick from acute angle across the face. And Mark not taken. Comes to ground again. Another kick toward goal. And it's still a third one. And, oh, it's a behind. And that is going to be a behind. Amanda Flock once, twice, three times a lady, but could only get one point. And we are all square here in San Diego, New York 128, Sacramento 128, as the ball will be put back into play. Desperate stuff by Sacramento, and it's a much different game than last year, Gil, because, uh, and here we're gonna send that one back at goal. It's going across the face again, and another behind, and Sacramento is taking the lead, just like that. It's nine, nine to eight. eight. Yep. Nine to eight Sacramento. So one three plays one two. I stopped there because I heard them cheering behind me as I was going to change the score. And I was like, oh, maybe it was a goal, but it wasn't. Ball will come back in the play up the near side, just out of the hands of Clark. She'll stay with it and just take the footy. She'll turn around, keep that one in the pocket. Going to get it is McHale. McHale and her Navy come out to the near side. Going after the get it is win. The boundary line is looming. The boundary line wins in front of Mackenzie Carr. Now, did you say wins. the boundary line wins or it wins? Because sure. if it wins, that would be the Sacramento uh, midfielder. Well, I was going to say that's what uh, that, in New Zealand. Uh, it was, oh, it of course. It wins. wins. It wins. And don't ask them to say the number that comes between five and seven. Meanwhile, it's six, bruh. Six, six, mate. And here they <laughs> come. Bruh. The ball that, bruh. And the ball comes back. You've been there. I haven't. The ball goes <laughs> to ground as uh, it is um, uh, squirted out of there. Algozin was there. Handballs it over to McHale. McHale looking for McKenzie. McKenzie's going to dig in after it. It's going to be picked up out to the near side, out on the full. And oh, and what a juggling mark made oh, by a oh, fan. Whoa, hey. Sitting right alongside us with her handbag next to her and what a juggling mark she took. Get in there. <laughs> Sign her up. Hemingway on the kick in, booms it down inside 50, and the Magpies converge on it. Going for it now Wallace. is Jennifer Lawless. Spills back toward Hemingway. She's got room to run. On the run, she's going to take a running shot at goal, but it goes wide of the mark and no score as it goes out of bounds. Sacramento 9, New York 8 on the Cooper scoreboard. Oh, Hemingway was looking for some glory right there to give New York the lead back, but it goes out on the full. She's been like Hallie Castan or Lindsay Castanek in the last game, Gil. I think she's just been a little bit snake bit. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's funny, cometh the hour, cometh the, cometh the player, but uh, I think in both cases they've tried to step up. She's had her opportunities but hasn't been able to take them as the ball will come in from that back pocket looking for Adamo, but Mark nicely. I uh, believe that was by, no, that's Liz Danielson. And that's so, one of the first marks that we've seen of the match, strangely enough. Yeah, so here is Danielson out to the near side looking for win. It goes over her head. Ball goes out of bounds in front of Kading, I believe, 32. Kading also might have pushed in the back, but not called by the umpire. I don't think it was obvious enough, so we'll have a ball in near the commentary position. Ball comes back in the play as Hargreaves is able to win that one out against Klo, the 223s. Ball goes to ground, going to pick that up, comes out to the near side. Oh, that was off the ball, not called by the umpire. And now they did, now they did call it. That's the right call. And okay. the free kick, it should have gone to 28. It says it goes to Hemingway, and she'll play on. That one will go in. It drops in short. They have come all the way over here, are the coaches. And now here they come as that one goes to Coplo. Shoved off the football by Westman. To Carl, couldn't get to it. Ball goes to ground. Just getting away. Handballed it in. Going over to get it now. Stayed with the footy. Just got away there. And then uh, 23, I don't think that was Clo. But it stayed with it. And oh, and another mark forward. taken. Great mark taken in the middle of the ground as we look for it. I believe that's uh, uh, that's uh, uh, Bishop over oh, a nice intercept mark by Drea Casillas. 
the two women, two of the only women that are playing in this tournament who played in the very first one in 2005. That is correct. And also the Suns not using the fat part of the ground. They have not spread as widely. Oh, and now somebody goes to ground oh. for the Magpies. She is in some strife. As the ball is kicked near the wing, that was not good. 20, so she was, 28. That was number, that's 28 who is down over there. That's Joanne Romillard who just came on. And meanwhile, play continues down at the other end of the ground with the Magpies and the Suns. The Suns with a chance to tackle here, and I believe they might have called, got a player holding the ball. They don't. I and think that might have been no prior opportunity. No prior, that's right. Now, Romillard is uh, thankfully coming off the ground under her own power. Really, really had her head snapped back off the deck as she was pushed backward. Couldn't see whether that was really incidental. Didn't look like it was on purpose. May have just been... Uh, a collision in the heat of things. I think that was uh, collateral damage as part of the tackle as the ball continues as Klo trying to get through. Her team, Sacramento, leads 9-8. to eight. One three plays 1-2. And I uh, wonder what happened here as uh, Lockett and Klo got Angle tangled up. It'll be a ball up on that far side here on USAFL.com. Here is Verkirk who knocked it forward. That one is kicked. That one is smothered there by Fudor who stayed with the footy. Fudor, and that one is a snap for goal right across the face and another point to uh, Sacramento that takes them on or rather that is to uh, one four ten it is no that is uh, yeah that is to Sacramento I'm okay sorry. one four ten to Sacramento and uh, at this point this is such a tightly played match those handy points uh, really will make a difference now inside the forward 50 for Sacramento Magpies trying to clear it. Ball comes to ground, and it's going to be thrown up again by the ball by the umpire. As Sacramento now making a move, trying to get that desperately sought after goal. Tap comes out toward the boundary. Suns player with it. Long kick down toward the forward pocket, but it's intercepted by the Magpies. Nice intercept mark down there, and a kick away going to play up the line, headed for Coplo. Coplo can't come down with it, taken by the Suns. Ball, play, or player moved off the ball, Suns with numbers, and they have it, a shot on goal, and that is a little wide of the mark, and I believe that is across the face and should be a boundary throw in. I believe that's the situation. We have boundary throw in across the left across the left back pocket. 10 to eight, the score, Sacramento the lead on the Cooper's scoreboard, ball comes spinning back in the play. Can Sacramento do two in a row here at Nationals over New York? I'll tell you what, Gil, that's been the scoring side of the ground right where they are, and it was true in that last game uh, that we did between Denver and Calgary. As the ball comes spinning back in the play, going after it, ball goes to the deck. Uh, going over to get it there was uh, Adamo, able to get it away, one-on-one -on -one contest going after Oh, there. and here Kim comes Hemingway. Hemingway, she's here away, does it, don't argue. Kim Hemingway kicks that one through the middle, it is juggled and marked by Wolf, by Sam Wolf. So here is Samantha Wolf going to kick that one in, looking for, for Wallace. Wallace is all by there, she just has to pick it up, she knows it kicks the goal! Genevieve Wallace! Beautiful job in a hundred meters from end to end. It went from uh, it went from one side to the other, but that was all started by Kim Hemingway. New York hits the front, two to fourteen. They lead by four points to uh, one. Was that one four ten? Beautiful passage of play and the easiest of goals. Once she got control of the ball, right out in front by Lawless. So we got Lawless setting down the law right here in San Diego. So back to the middle they go as New York has just gone on top. Ball goes up and tap down. Nice tap and a clearance to Sacramento. And Sacramento going for right inside their forward 50. And two players go down in a heap for New York and Sacramento respectively. It'll be another ball up just inside. Or no, free, free kick. kick. Free kick Maybe going the Suns way. And a short ship kick out there. And another run and a kick toward the goal square, toward the hot spot, into the contest. Ball comes to ground off hands. Could be an opportunity for the Suns here. Ball spilling out of the back, across the behind Ooh. post. Now, actually, no, comes back into play. And looking for it, the Suns trying to get a kick away. And the ball comes to ground. Scrum going on. Magpies have it. Try and get rid of it. Suns player is tackled down there. Don't believe she had prior opportunity, so it will be a ball up. Wow, hard footy out there for both sides again. 14 to 10 the score as Sacramento. Well, that was that was on the counterattack because 
Sacramento has had all the sway of play, juggled and marked nicely. And it was done there by, uh, by Erica Palmer. So Palmer will go back with uh, Casillas, or check that, with Algozin on the mark, Skenechny on the mark, and Ice and set mark. And that was taken nicely by Remoir. So you can hear Christina Licata to my left, the coach telling her to lead wide. They want to find the boundary line. It's their turn to do it, just out of the reach of Clark. Stays with the footy. Oh, that could have been collared high. And then she just got it away. They're calling for deliberate. They're not going to get it. It's not as tight as it is in the AFL, Gil. It'll be a boundary throw in Cooper's scoreboard score check. It's New York 2-2-14. Sacramento 1-4-10, that's for USAFL.com. And if it's being uh, called deliberate, the AFL has a very liberal interpretation of that rule the last year. I was going to say, it's very, it's a much tighter rule. I'm not really a big fan of it because it causes way too much controversy. It definitely does. And right now, it looks gonna be, we're going to have our third consecutive uh, boundary throw in there as the ball keeps being hammered out. And here we go again. And again... Okay, well, you know, we are just a little bit south of Hollywood, so this will be boundary throw in take four. Well, uh, and no, and actually, there's going to be a free kick paid now. Free kick that's going to be uh, paid to Genevieve Lawless in the back pocket. She's motioning for someone to come her way. Now kick short, going over there, trying to get Emma Kading, can't. Sun's trying to pick it up near the boundary line. Kading has it, tries to get a kick, and she kicks out on the full. Not advisable that time trying to kick as she really had nowhere to put it. She was playing in the in the phone box there. Out in the middle of the ground they go. They put that one front and square. Again leading by four points. Sacramento trying to stab the Magpies with their steely knives, but they just can't kill the beast as that one is thrown down and Fudor is stood up. Uh, high tackle maybe holding the ball. No, umpire says give that to me as we are getting toward the business half of the second half. A very exciting game uh, really for pride for both teams, but don't tell these two sides that. Ball goes to ground. We'll have a ball up in front. Gil, one thing I've noticed, I mean, the intensity is broken up. New York's defense really been putting it to the test so far. It's been coming all ends up with one minute to go. Thank you, Peter Holden. That's right, with one minute to go, the Magpies, all they have to do pretty much is be able to keep it away from the Suns. Wynn tries a handball, can't get one away. Ball spills out of bounds. We'll have another boundary throw in. Suns putting the pressure on deep in their forward 50. And after the ruck tap, trying to control it. Scramble for the ball. Rolling mall rugby style. Umpire will likely do a ball up here. We're going to get it. Under a minute left to go. Not much time left for anything here for the mat for the uh, Suns. They kind of have maybe two shots at this one. Ball goes in the ground. That bounced away from uh, from Palmer. Stayed with the footy. to Carl couldn't get in there. Uh, uh, Casillas is in there to hold it up. New York is perfectly okay with that. As we are under half a minute to go. In fact, we have 10 seconds to go. Can New York hang on? Sacramento will have one roll of the dice per chance. Left-footed kick for goal. It's there. Barked on the last line of defense. They're going to take their time. They're yelling to settle it down. The, with the siren is imminent. Out to the near side. Probably because of the injury, they may have played on a little bit. Not sure. That's it. It's over. The New York Magpies have avenged last year's defeat against Sacramento in a heart-stopping game here. They got that one, and that goal by Genevieve Wallace is the difference. That great transition play, that's all they need. And New York brings home full points, the final score. It's the New York Magpies, 2-2-14. The Sacramento Lady Suns, 1-4-10 brilliant game of football. Absolutely, and isn't it fitting that the game is decided really by one kick, as you said, with Lawless down at the other end, knowing how tightly these games have been played by these two sides against each other. It was a match that had a little bit of spite, a lot of passion, and uh, a lot of intensity. And, and uh, a lot of action and a lot of excitement. And you know what? The Suns, they're an improving side, as we mentioned. They're 0-3 they're again this year. But you know what? This is some of the best football I've seen them play against the New York team that was at about the same level. Look at the celebration there as they are. <laughs> well, you told them not to tell this it was a match for pride, and they don't act like it. No, absolutely. They got their win. And Christina Licata, who for my money is one of the best coaches on the men's or women's side, she was a longtime player. She was in that first uh, Nationals in Milwaukee as well. 
So New York comes home one and two, third place in the group, Sacramento 0 and three. Gil, thank you very much. It was great calling this game with you. No worries, mate. My pleasure. And thanks to Mark Gonzalez on camera for the two of them. I'm Brian Barish. We have more games. Check them out on USAFL.com and on YouTube.com slash USAFL. Until then, Brian Barish saying goodbye for now.